Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And today's card, which features Simon Says Stamps, Poppy Field stamp set. I've done a couple videos using this set in the past. I'll have links to them in the upper right throughout the video and a couple at the end screen. And yeah, as of filming this, I'm going to post this on November 11th, which is Remembrance Day here in Canada, Veterans Day in the US. And it is just a day to honor those that have served in the Canadian Armed Forces, in other countries, in their armed forces, etc. And yeah, just a good day of remembrance. And poppies being one of the big symbols of that, especially up here in Canada. So I tend to pull out my poppy stamp sets and like to make a card just kind of in honor of that. So that's what I did. And this time I used my Distress Oxide Sprays to do some watercoloring. I've been showing my dis Distress Spray Stains recently, watercoloring and ink smushing and all the things. I've done many things with the Oxide Sprays as well. I have done watercolor with them in past videos and yeah, they work really well with like large florals like this. They just give a different look. You can always use the Distress Oxide inks, same thing, smush them on a palette, watercolor with those, use whatever coloring mediums you prefer. But yeah, I was just feeling the, the Oxide sprays and then these poppies and everything. So. If you keep watching, I will show you guys how I made this card. I pulled out some Canson XL watercolor paper and I just have a whole bunch of pieces that I um, cut down from the main pack. So they're right now they're four and a half by six inches roughly. And this is a big stamp. Like I said, I've done other videos using it. I even, I did a video getting like two card fronts out of this one stamped image because it's, it's big. It is nice and big. And again, you guys know I love large florals. <laughs> love them. We'll never get tired of them. So for whatever reason, I decided to put this sideways in my Misty. I don't know. Did I need to? No. Um, but I just did. It doesn't matter. And I ended up using one of my magnets just to hold the watercolor paper down just just a little bit extra i rarely use magnets anymore because i have the waffle flower grip mats but my grip mat i need to i need to wipe it down it's got like antiseptic powder all over it that sort of thing and when it gets a little grody it doesn't it doesn't grip as well and you just wipe it down clean it like you clean your stamps or if i get it if i get it really filthy i just take it to my sink and wash it with some gentle soap and water and it's good to go so anywho I had used antiseptic powder on the watercolor paper and then I stamped the large image with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, inked it up and stamped it a few times just to get all that detail. And then I coated everything with Simon's um, Detail Clear embossing powder and then melted that with my heat tool. And I talk about um, tilting it back and forth in the light to make sure everything is smooth and shiny and melted. Thought I'd done that, but I missed a spot. And trying to show it on camera, the, the center portion, and you'll see when I tilt it back and forth, there's no shine. See, everything else is shiny and there's, there's no shine because I, I missed it. And so I'm going to heat this with my heat tool and melt it. It's just, it's hard to show, but once I tilt it, now it's shiny. So that's what I'm always talking about. When I am heat embossing, that's what you're looking for. It's just the, the smooth shiny. When it's dull and grainy, it just means the embossing powder in that spot has not been melted. So you definitely want to get that, get that melted before you go on to do whatever it is you're doing, whether it's watercoloring or ink blending or whatever. So I made sure I got everything done. And then, like I said in the intro, for my watercoloring, I'm using uh, Distress Oxide spray stains. And again, you could use just Distress Oxide inks. It'll give a very similar look. Um, they're different formulas. The, the stains are not the same formula as what is in the ink pads, but still similar when you're doing things like watercolor and whatnot. I just... I enjoy, I don't know, I like the liquid consistency of the stains. I'm really enjoying them. 
And with the oxide spray stains, obviously you need to shake them up very, very well. So I'd shaken mine up before I even started filling, filming because you want to make sure that all of those pigments are dispersed. And then I just put them on my palette like so. You don't need much. You need less than you think. Even what little I put on my little palette is more than I need. So I started with fossilized, fossilized amber. I did that for the top portion and I just have a paintbrush and off to the side I have a, just a big jar of water that I swirl my paintbrush in. I didn't bother taping this background down because even though I painted the entire thing including the background, um, I'm not adding so much water that it's going to warp much at all. Plus I was just feeling also because I wasn't 100% certain if I was going to keep this image like this size or if I was going to cut it down. So I didn't want to tape it and lose any of those margins. So just trying to explain the random thought process in my head. But anywho, for the top portion, I did fossilized amber. And then the bottom portion of the background, I was using crushed olive. And then for the greenery, I'm mixing both that crushed olive and rustic wilderness. And just letting them do their thing. It's one of the things I absolutely love about oxides, whether it's the spray stains or the ink pads themselves. Especially with watercoloring with them, is they like to do their own thing. You know, because the, the dyes in the liquid, you know, and the pigments, they just like to move. And as they dry, they just give it just a really neat look. And they're also very forgiving and I like it. So after I did the background and the greenery, for the actual blooms themselves, I'm using uh, Festive Berries and Lumberjack Plaid. And same thing, shook them up really, really well. They will, the longer they sit on a palette, the more the pigments will settle to the bottom of the palette, that's just gravity. So you just need to swirl your brush in there. So you're picking up both portions, the pigments and the, the ink to, to paint with. And again, it just, it's always different, it's always different. So for the blooms, I would just paint with clean water over the entire area. And then I would go in with the festive berries, which is the lighter red shade paint that, kind of pull it out a little bit, and then I'd go in with the Lumberjack Plaid, which is a much deeper intense red. And I would only apply the Lumberjack Plaid to the bases of these petals and then kind of pull that out as well. And this is all sped up in editing. I don't, I don't watercolor near this quickly. This is like 800% faster than I normally move. I also don't go super, super slow either. Only it's only when I'm doing like those very rare times I do like no line, that sort of thing. That's not my forte. I I love no line coloring. I love watching other makers do no line coloring or just really, you know, in depth adding the layers and the shading, the dimension, all of it. I love it. I really love it. I most of the time do not have the time or patience for it, but I love watching other people do it. <laughs> Me, I'm just, I just slap the color on. It just is what it is. And always remember, I have been, you know, slapping the color on for, for many, many years. And I just, I'm much more comfortable with it now than I was when I started. It frustrates people. And I used to be frustrated too when people were like, it just takes practice. But it's true. It really does. The more I've done it, watercolor has become one of my absolute favorite ways to color. Never thought I would say that, honestly. When I first started playing around with it, I was so frustrated. And I was like, why doesn't it look like everyone else's practice? So you find just what works for you. So after I watercolored it, I let it dry, which didn't take long. Because again, I didn't use much water. And then I put it in my splat box. And I'm using my Gonzai Tombi Starry watercolors with the gold specifically. And I'd put water in it before I turn the camera back on. And then I just swirled my little fan brush around in there to mix up the uh, metallic watercolor and then splattered this onto my background. So I'll have just that gold splatter detail going on. So I splattered this background with that and then set that aside to dry. And while it was drying, I did my die cutting. And I'm using the Fancy Thinking of You wafer die from Simon Says Stamp. And I die cut um, scraps of Simon's Midnight Green cardstock, just a really, really deep green cardstock. And I'm going to adhere two of those together to give the dimension. Just going to use little dabs of craft tacky glue to adhere these together. And then the top layer I die cut from matte gold cardstock. 
hence the gold splatter. I was going to use a gold sentiment, and then I'm also going to use some gold vellum while I'm at it. So I adhered those together. I originally was going to use just the wafer die because I do this quite a lot because there's an outline for this wafer die as well. More often than not, I don't use the outlines. It it's, just depends on my mood, depends on what I'm you know going for. So I wasn't going to use it, but I found that with the gold, it just kind of wasn't standing out the way I wanted it to. So I'll come back to that in a second. The other die cutting I did was the etched dragonfly wafer die, which I've used in like a million videos. I Still one of my favorites. Still. I die cut the, the body from that same midnight green cardstock and then the wings I die cut from gold vellum. Love. Absolutely love. And after I assembled it, I was like, I really like this gold vellum. No surprise there. I've used it in a ton of videos as well. And I was like, huh, I should use that for my outline. So that's what I did. I die cut the outline for the sentiment from the gold vellum. And then I die cut one more piece of the midnight green cardstock with the words again. This just makes life a little easier to adhere it because adhesive shows through vellum. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> if th There is nothing that doesn't show through vellum. However, there's ways around it. And I've shown different ways, either applying liquid adhesive completely over the entire piece, which I'm not a fan of because it makes the vellum curl, or using a little Xyron machine. That works as well. However, makes the vellum a little more transparent. It's a little more finicky, etc. Another way is just concealing the adhesive. Hence me using little, you know, dots of glue, trying to not to let it ooze out. And then I can just adhere the sentiment as is. I could flip it over and only put glue on the back where the words are. I've shown that in a ton of videos. Doing it this way, adhering a second or just an additional die cut word to the back. When I adhere this to the card, it'll make the vellum float a tiny bit more, which I'll show in a second. So that's why I adhered it to the back. So that, And also it just makes it easier to add adhesive. And I'll show that again, kind of at the end. So my main uh, card front that I had watercolored, like I said, it was six inches by four and a half originally. So I just trimmed off the side. So it ends up being four inches by six inches. And then my card base, I trimmed down a sheet of Simon's Smooth White cardstock to 10 inches by seven inches. And I'm going to score this at five inches. So it's going to be a five by seven card. So trimmed it down, scored it at five inches with my Teflon bone folder, and then reinforce that score line with the side of the bone folder there. So I've got my five by seven card. And then once I've got this scored and reinforced that fold, I'm actually going to fold this inside out because I'm going to stamp onto the inside of the card. So just reinforcing it over and over again because... Simon's Smooth White cardstock is very, very thick. That's why I like it for my card bases. And yeah, this is where I was like, this isn't going to work if I'm trying to stamp it sideways. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I was thinking in the beginning, but whatever. Just put things where they're supposed to be. Reposition the stamp in my Misty here to stamp on the inside of the card. I took a little bit of tape because I'm going to tape the card closed, basically. And got that out of the way for a second. And I just have some copy paper. You know, I keep all the inserts that I get in some of my packages, etc. And I use this for things like this or ink blending, r random notes, all the things. Like, I just reuse it until it can't be used no more. So, and for things like this. So, I inked up that floral image with Lumberjack Plaid Distress Oxide Ink. Stamped it onto that scrap of copy paper. So, I got that first generation off of there put the card base onto the into my misty and then stamped the stamp without re-inking it so I got the second generation inking so it's just a lot lighter to make it much easier to write over because when, especially when I stamp something this large on the inside of my cards I don't want it to be so vibrant that it's hard to write over because I write right over it people ask me that a lot totally write over it if you don't want to you could write on the other side of the inside or the back but I just write over it it's just extra extra embellishment extra something on the inside and then the sentiments are from the same stamp set and I inked those up with uh, rustic wilderness and then uh, verse fine that verse fine Claire nocturne ink so that was the inside of the card for the card front I cut a piece of that same midnight green cardstock to just slightly larger than that panel so it was like I said four by six so this was like maybe just shy of a little over four inches by six inches. Adhered those together, 
stuck them to the card front. And now I'm hearing my sentiment and having this cardstock words on the back, it's just easier to add the glue. Otherwise, I'm just a little more careful with the glue and adhering it to like putting the glue on the back of the vellum because again, you don't want the glue oozing out onto the vellum because it'll show through. So this way it floats just a tiny bit. So the vellum is a little more noticeable in a sense. And then the little dragonfly, I just put a little dab of glue onto the body and then pressed into place. So the wings are a little bit popped up and I'll kind of show a close up at the end as well because there's all that etching detail in the wings, which I just love. So I love that little wafer die. And then um, some little gold crystal embellishments as just the final touch and that finished off this card. So I've got the watercolor, the splatter, the sentiment, the gold vellum, this little dragonfly that is just perfection. And then yeah, this super dark green cardstock, which on my screen looks almost black, but it's just a very deep green. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list with links to all the supplies I use that will be in the description box directly below the video. So you can just expand that if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.